Greetings everyone. Today I want to address a topic that I see come up every so often in the comment section and I've seen it around other places as well. And that is why do audio amplifiers have such wide bandwidth or high slew rate numbers? The generally accepted frequency response of human hearing is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. But you'll see amplifier specs that show the response of the amplifier going well beyond human hearing range, well up into the several hundred kilohertz range. Now the question does make sense. Why in the heck does an amplifier need to reproduce a signal at such a high level? Well, I'll try to explain this without going too deep, but I will cover it more in later videos. I'll just try to keep this fairly simple, but it does require a little bit of understanding. It has to do with feedback and the amplifier's ability to reproduce signals at higher frequency with low distortion. And when I say higher frequencies, that's still within the human hearing range of up to 20 kilohertz. Okay, so the graph I have here is called a Bode plot. It looks like it would be Bode, but of course it's somebody's name, so it's never pronounced the way you would think it would be. But on the x-axis you have the frequency shown here logarithmically and on the y-axis is decibels. The amplifier will have what's known as open loop gain and closed loop gain. And in this case it's kind of arbitrarily picked values. I have the closed loop gain at 28, open loop gain at 100. At 100 dB that's very high gain. Now it's very common for hi-fi type amplifiers to have very high gain, somewhere around 100, give or take. But the amplifier is operated at what's known as closed loop gain, where some of the signal is fed back from the output to an inverting input node, and that sets the gain to a useful level. Now negative feedback is used in an amplifier to linearize its output, in other words, to remove distortion from its signal distortion and noise I should say. Now for negative feedback to do its job the amplifier has to have what's known as loop gain and that's the amount of gain between open and closed loop for if it didn't have any negative feedback could not do its job to linearize the amplifier. Now looking at the amplifiers open loop gain it'll start at some high level and start decreasing. You can think of these straight lines as asymptotes, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I have to go back to junior high algebra, but normally the gain would be more like a curve. But anyhow, after some frequency, this gain would roll off, and at a very high frequency, it could be uh, in the hundreds of kilohertz or, or even over 1 megahertz or even up to 10 megahertz or more the gain would reach unity. But as I said earlier, the amplifier is normally operated in closed loop gain. Now the problem is, this is rolling off the open loop gain. And at this line here, which is 20 kilohertz, you can see we don't have as much loop gain as we did here. So negative feedback doesn't have as much loop gain to work with in order to correct for nonlinearities. So let's say we made an amplifier that had poor open loop gain response. You know, if the line, let's say the line went here like this, well you could see at 20 kilohertz there's almost no working margin here. There's, there's very little loop gain. So negative feedback would not be able to correct for distortions at 20 kilohertz. And that wouldn't look too good on the spec sheet if your amplifier had like 1% distortion at higher frequencies, even though it did much better at lower frequencies. If you ever looked at a spec sheet, it'll have the amplifier's power into 8 ohms, 20 to 20 kilohertz at some amount of distortion. And if you had to put something like 1% on there, it wouldn't look that nice for a expensive hi-fi amplifier. When the amplifier is operated in closed loop gain, you can see this response will be flat way out to this point. And as you can see, this is several hundred kilohertz. This is like 700 kilohertz until it hits this point and the frequency response would start rolling off. 
So in a nutshell, that is why amplifiers have wide frequency responses, and to some extent that goes hand in hand with slew rate. Now I want to take a look at some arguments against this. Why is it even necessary to do this still? Well, music signals don't have a lot of energy up around 20 kilohertz. And that's true. If you ever looked at the spectrum of an audio signal, there's not a lot of energy at higher frequencies, especially above 15 kilohertz. Very low level signal. And any harmonic distortion produced is going to be even smaller. There's no way you would hear it. Most people can't hear up there anyway. And then the argument might go on. Uh, well, there's intermodulation distortion that, you know, at such high frequencies, you know, some of the signals can produce intermodulation artifacts that reflect back down into the audible bandwidth. And then the counter argument to that would be, well, the signal is already so low that the different signals generated from intermodulation distortion is going to be even lower. You're not going to hear it in the music anyway, provided the amplifier is not awful. And that does make sense. There are some pretty awful spec amplifiers out there that people love. They just enjoy it. They're fine with it. So what's my opinion on this? I kind of stand in the middle. I think it's great that engineers can come up with amplifier designs that produce extremely low distortion. And with my amplifier project here, I'm not going for the 0.0007% THD figures. I want something that's still respectable, but not overly complex or complicated to produce. You know, I still want an amplifier that's an order of magnitude below what I feel that anybody could hear. And in some cases, people say that's even over 1%, but still, I want my amp to be well below 0.1. You know, maybe 0 0.001 at 1 kilohertz, and maybe around 0 0.01 at 20 kilohertz. That might be a tough number to reach with such a design at 20 kilohertz, but as long as it's still respectable, I'll be happy with my amplifier. Well, that's my take of it. I'd like to see your comments in the comment section discussing this. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Do you think it's crazy to go after these extremely low distortion figures? Like I say, it's great that we have the knowledge to be able to produce such things, but to me, it's just overkill. It, it's like a numbers game. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.